Breaking news, the CDC eviction moratorium is officially over. We are gonna run through who this affects and what it would take to bring an eviction moratorium back. Hey there, Christian Walsh with Wire Associates. We're real estate agents based in Southern California, helping tenants and landlords and buyers and sellers in California and beyond navigate these crazy days. And we're here with a big update on the CDC eviction moratorium. We've been covering the eviction moratorium since the very beginning. The national eviction moratorium, which is the CDC eviction moratorium, our statewide eviction moratorium and some of the local ones, including Los Angeles eviction moratorium. And this is big news. So the CDC eviction moratorium has been challenged essentially since it was put into place. The CDC eviction moratorium was put on life support, so to speak, in June and finally expired on July 31st. It then was revived on August 3rd in a new form and the CDC eviction moratorium at that time was limited in scope and it was limited to those counties in the United States where coronavirus was transmitted amongst the community at a substantial or high level. And we showed you how you could find those counties on our last video. So what happened? What finally ended the CDC eviction moratorium? Really what it boils down to is the fact it has been challenged that the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, who were using emergency powers to put in place the eviction moratorium to keep folks in their home to prevent them from spreading coronavirus, that in doing this and setting up the eviction moratorium, they were overstepping their bounds. And really, in order for an eviction moratorium to go in place, it should come from the legislative branch. It should come from Congress. So ultimately, that is the crux of the argument and the reason it was killed yet again. The Supreme Court just upheld that in order for there to be an eviction moratorium, that it must come from Congress. And this is no surprise, Congress is in charge of making laws. Congress did know that this was potentially a challenge and when the previous CDC eviction moratorium expired July 31st, they attempted to try to pass something and were unsuccessful. So this new version that went in place on August 3rd, that was supposedly the compromise to help limit the powers of the CDC eviction moratorium. But ultimately it failed. So here we are, the CDC eviction moratorium is dead. Now what this means is this only affects the national CDC eviction moratorium. This does not affect statewide eviction moratoria like California and AB 832, nor does this affect local eviction moratoria like there is in Los Angeles and other cities. This does not affect statewide or local eviction moratoria because the CDC eviction moratorium at a national level has been challenged. That's important to understand. If at the state or local level, a legislative branch created an eviction moratorium, it is still in place. This has no effect on it. Only the areas that were exclusively under the protection of the CDC eviction moratorium are the areas that are affected by this. So what would it take to bring an eviction moratorium back at a national level? The point of the CDC eviction moratorium was to keep people in their homes, keep them from spreading coronavirus and going out into the streets, either being homeless or having to move in with relatives. So that was the point of the CDC eviction moratorium. In order to have a national eviction moratorium, we would need Congress to step in and pass the eviction moratorium. That is the point we're at. That is the only way it would have to be the legislative branch to step in at the national level to create an eviction moratorium. This is possible, but it will take time. So it's unlikely that in the next week or two that we're going to have an eviction moratorium put in place at the national level. And Congress may not be able to put one in place, may not be able to agree on doing it. So the eviction moratorium at the national level could be dead for good. The other point of the CDC eviction moratorium was to give more time to pass out the 46 plus billion dollars that had been distributed from the government in March and December for rental assistance. Those funds are still slowly making their, their way out. Some states and local areas have gotten better. California has fine-tuned things with housingiskey.com Everywhere in California, you can visit that website and you can see if your address falls under the statewide program 
or a local program. In cities like LA, who had a very difficult time getting the first rounds of funds out, are now partnering with Housing is Key. So on September 1st, starting at 7 a.m., if you're in Los Angeles, you can submit a rental assistance application to housingiskey.com. So that's great for California, but California is not covered by the CDC eviction moratorium. And we still have in place AB 832 through September 30th, 2021, unless they could extended. If you are in an area where you no longer have an eviction moratorium in place, we encourage you to call 211 or visit 211.org. Find local rental assistance if you can. We have a link below to the Low Income Housing Coalition website, which is the single best resource to find state and local rental assistance programs. So make sure you check that out. Again, if you're at risk of homelessness, dial 211 or visit 211.org. We hope you found this helpful. Things continue to change. We'll let you know if there's any updates to a national eviction moratorium, but at this point in time, it's done. Leave your comments below, let us know. Landlords, are you going to be moving forward with an eviction right away? Or are you gonna leave some more time for the rental assistance funds to come your way? And tenants, what are you doing if you're no longer protected by an eviction moratorium? Let us know below. We'd love to have you subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter where we cover topics like this, plus a whole lot more for tenants and landlords and buyers and sellers. Join over 1,300 others who've subscribed and click the link below, or you can text newsletter to 949-691-3566. Remember, we can't give tax or legal advice, but for the most honest and up-to-date real estate advice, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, Wire Associates, and we appreciate you.